Good morning and welcome to worship this morning on um, the first Sunday in September on this Labor Day weekend. Hopefully you are all staying cool. And we remind you that we continue as we worship at home to have your communion ready. And if you are able, um, you can have a altar um, with some candles and the Bible and a little dish with water to remind you of your baptism, that we are still connected through um, our video worship as well. Let us begin our service with the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, the one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess, confess that, that we, we do have not trust our abundance. abundance. We, we deny, deny your presence in our lives. lives. We, we place our hope ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear differences and we do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, Lead, lead us, us so, so that, that we, we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint. Because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with our gathering hymn, Built on a Rock, number 652. Jesus. 
Jesus, the children, his blessing. Hither we come to praise his name. Faith in our Savior confessing. Jesus to us, his Spirit sent, making with us his covenant, granting his children the kingdom. Through all the passing years, O oh God, grant that when church bells are of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also so. with you. Bind the amen, bind the praise, hallelujahs, angels raise, bind the everlasting head, bind the breaking of the bread, bind the glory, bind the story, bind the harvest and the cup, Thine the vineyard, thine the cup is lifted up, lifted up. Thine the life eternally, thine the promise let there be. Thine the vision, thine the tree, all the earth on bended knee. Gone the nailing, gone the railing, gone the pleading, gone the cry. Gone the sign, gone the dying, what was lost, lifted high. Let us pray. O Lord God, enliven the perseverance of your church with your perpetual mercy. With your help, we mortals will fail. Remove far from us everything that is harmful and lead us towards all that it gives life and salvation. Through Jesus Christ, your Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Sometimes the load is heavy, and sometimes the road is long. Sometimes, Lord, this heart of mine is not so very strong, but thy will be done, Lord, thy will be done. Father, 
daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever Amen Now Lord I feel Thank you, Steve, for that beautiful song. A reading from Matthew. Jesus said to the disciples, If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, Take one or two others along with you, so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the members refuse to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to li listen to them, listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile or a tax collector. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by the Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. As I was preparing for this sermon, I came across this quote from a theologian. She says, whenever two or more are gathered, it can be really hard to get along. And I thought about my family. The first thing that came to mind was my big family. We never got along. There's always some kind of drama. Even at great events, there is some kind of drama because someone wants to go here or there or do this or that, and we have to plan it all out. We have to make sure everyone's on the same page. And of course, with a large family, because I have 10 on my mom's side and 10 on my dad's side, sometimes it gets a little bit complicated. And miscommunication happens. And then there's hurt feelings. And people get left out. And people feel like they're alone, or abandoned, or not thought of. Even in the midst of a gathering of two or three, you can feel left out. So when I was in Michigan last month for a week, celebrating the life of my uncle, there were about 50 of us, and we all had different ideas of what we wanted to do, of what our trip was all about. And at times we came together and we did the same thing. 
We watched people swim in Lake Huron in the middle of summer, in the middle of a pandemic, which was very interesting. Not too many people participated. But we had to decide on a location and a time to meet up because we were all staying in different places. And that took some work. Being a part of a family and communicating takes a lot of work because not everyone agreed on going. Not everyone wanted to go or even knew about what was going on. It really showed up when eight of us went on a boat ride and some of us couldn't go. My younger cousins really wanted to go, but they live in Michigan and they can go anytime they want because their brother was the one who has the boat. Yet they still wanted to go because we were family and we were out of town and there were hurt feelings. And we expressed those feelings and talked about them and talked about how they lived there and could do this anytime. And those of us who didn't don't always get that opportunity. It takes a lot of communication so that people don't feel left out. Our gospel in Matthew today emphasizes Jesus' teaching on communication, basically on conflict, which no one likes. And conflict concerning the church, how members of the church live their lives and take up their arguments with one another, take up their opinions with one another. Churches all over the world have a conflict, believe it or not, but it's how you handle that conflict in the body of Christ that really tells a congregation or people who you are. There was a youth event that I went on where there was an incident with the youth and we came home and I had to deal with it before it got out of control, before the rumors in the church started. Because rumors started even before we got home. See, cell phones in the hands of youth can be dangerous at times because they call their parents first and then they tell the youth director or the adults who were on the trip about what had happened. I was like the second or third person to find out what had happened and I was right there with the youth. But I had to call the parents and say, wait a minute, let's stop and think and talk about what had happened. Let's get together before this becomes a big rumor, before it becomes a conflict, so everyone can work out the details. And it's really hard when it's with youth because sometimes you get the whole story and sometimes you get half of a story. But whatever the story is, it's important to sit down and talk about that. Unfortunately, this story got a little bit out of control because the parent then called another parent and that parent had an opinion and called the other pastors and really didn't give a chance for the process to work. So in the time we were driving home, people were already starting rumors and not letting conflict be resolved first. Conflict is something we all have come in contact with. Christians throughout the centuries have had conflict. We hurt each other, not intentionally, but it happens because we're sinful people. And Jesus describes here how to deal with that conflict to go to that person. So I went to that parent and we talked and the conflict was resolved. There was still a little bit lingering conflict because she had already gone and gossiped to another parent, but that was resolved too. This conflict situation with the youth didn't get out of control like sometimes they do. Yes, people were hurt. Yes, feelings were also heard, but reconciliation was made. The conflict was resolved before it got out of control. 
That's what Jesus wanted. Matthew, the writer of Matthew and all of the Gospels remind us that we are sinful people, that conflict happens, and yet we are called to forgive. Throughout this chapter of Matthew, chapter 18, we will hear more about how Jesus calls us to forgive. Remember that where two or three are gathered, conflict will probably occur because we do have different opinions. But it's Christ who calls us together. Christ who calls us together to listen to one another. We don't always have to agree, but we're not called to run away from it or make it become gossip. We're called to enlighten it, to open it up, to talk about it, to offer the different opinions, to listen to each other. Jesus challenges us to forgive our brothers and sisters, to speak with love, just as Christ has spoken to love for each of us. Conflict helps us clarify our values and our priorities in our relationships. Not all conflict is bad conflict. Sometimes there's even good conflict. But either way, we're called to be brothers and sisters in Christ knowing that Christ is forgiving us. At the beginning of the service, we confessed our faith and your sins were forgiven. So this day know that your sins are forgiven. Know that Christ loves you. Know that your life is changed because of your baptism, because of your belief in Jesus. So go out into this world and cause good conflict in a way, but also listen to others. Listen to their sides and their perspectives. It may change who we are, and it may not. But we're called to be open to one another's opinions. God loves each of you, so share that love with others. Amen. Our hymn of the day is Beautiful Savior, number 838.
hearts pure than all the angels in the sky. Beautiful Savior, Lord of the nations, Son of God and Son of Man. Glory and honor, praise, adoration, now and forevermore be thine. Together, let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Drawn together in the compassion of God, we pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. O oh God, unite the church. Grant us the gift of repentance and reconciliation. Bless the cooperative work of all churches in this community. Strengthen our ecumenical partners and guide the work of the Lutheran World Federation and the World Council of Churches. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Protect your creation, O oh God. Teach us ways that, do, that we do not harm or that you have entrusted us to care for the earth. Renew and enliven places of suffering from drought, floods, or pollution. Be with all of those who are experiencing grief from, firefight from fires. Be and surround the firefighters who are battling them to save our creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Turning nations and leaders from ways that lead to, from life to death, shape new paths towards peace and cooperation, teaching us to recognize one another as neighbors, guide legislators, civil, civic leaders, judges, police officers towards law that protects the well-being of all. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Tend to the needs of our congregation with compassion. Hear the cries of those awaiting justice and those yearning for forgiveness. Give communities throughout the world that know your love and are able to shelter those who are vulnerable in mind, body, or spirit. Lord, protect those in our congregations as we continue this worshiping separately. Gather us in your love. Surround each member of our saviors. Give love and peace and mercy to those who are in need. Strengthen those who are fighting battles of health issues. Be with doctors and nurses who are taking care of people with COVID. We pray for all our essential workers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sustain us in your work, O oh God, and give us the work that we need. Shape our society to ensure fair treatment for all those who labor. Help us to love our neighbor in our work that we do. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We remember with thanksgiving those who have died in faith. As you equip them, equip us with your protection and power until with them we see your salvation. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you see that we need, we entrust to your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also, and also with, with you. you. Let us share Christ's peace with our family members. We are so thankful that you are worshiping with us this morning and the gifts that you continue to give us to support this ministry here. Our preschool is still going and we are moving forward alive and well. So thank you for all those donations for our preschool as well. I invite you at this time to have um, your communion ready. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift them, them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to give, give our, our thanks and praise. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. God of the welcoming table, in this meal we have feasted on your goodness and have been united with your presence among us. Empower us to go forth sustained by the gifts so that we may share your neighborly love with all. Through Jesus Christ, the giver of abundant life. Amen. Amen. As you go into your week, go knowing that Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, King of all creation, will go before you to lead you the way of your life. He will be on your right side and your left side as friend, advocate, and companion. He will be above you to watch over you and below you, lifting you up, giving you all that is needful, grace sufficient for the challenges that you face each and day and the fruits of the holy spirit he will be behind you encouraging you on those difficult and challenging places relationships and the very real obstacles and mazes that you may be facing so as you go into your week go knowing that jesus christ your lord and savior will be around you until we gather next week as his loving serving joyful people amen our sending him is This Little Light of Mine, number 677.
everywhere I go. I'm gonna let it shine everywhere I go. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Jesus gave it to me. I'm gonna let it shine. Go in peace, share the good news. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.